Howdy folks, today we're here to introduce you to Silver Assured, who is the only homozygous silver horse in the AQHA. My name is Ryan Fleetwood, I am the owner of this stallion, and I'm here with Joel Libert, who is the trainer. Thanks Ryan. So, my name is Joel Libert, I've been riding horses my entire life, operating a professional horse training business for the last 10 years. When I was younger, um, my family, we would buy and sell horses and the, the mental philosophy or the way we would go about it is, you know, we would usually find the $500 horse and put a month of training into it and, and try and flip it. And that didn't always work out so well and actually it led me to the belief that buying and selling horses is a bad idea. <laughs> and that's changed. Um, so I, I guess I want to start. You typically hear two opinions on bloodlines. There's people who think bloodlines don't matter, a horse is a horse, and bloodlines don't affect it, and then there's people who really put a lot of faith and value into bloodlines. And I'll tell you when my idea on this, all of this started changing, and that was when I started riding better horses. And when I started riding better horses, my skills as a horse trainer and as a horseman improved as well. It was kind of synonymous. And so as I furthered my horse training business, I began to compete in competitions. So um, in Vanderhoof in 2017, I competed in a, their ranch horse competition. I won that in their green horse class and their broke horse class. And then the next year I competed in the Chautauqua Colt Starting Challenge and um, won that and then in 2018 I also competed in the Rocky Heart Challenge and so that's a big colt starting challenge in southern Alberta and one of the judges there was actually Ryan himself and um, I there's two classes that you have the opportunity to compete in in that challenge basically I guess you get a horse for 60 days you ride that horse, train it as good as you can, and then you compete in a pattern, which is similar to a reigning pattern, and then there's the wow factor. And I was actually able to win both of those classes. And I had a bit of an opportunity to talk to Ryan afterwards, and he said potentially in the future maybe he would send some horses to me. Fast forward to that following winter, Ryan approached me and I was able to train his stud Silver Lincoln. Now, Silver Lincoln was a bit of an eye-opener for me. I, I love well-bred horses, I love athletic horses. Silver Lincoln brought something different to the table. He brought just such a quiet disposition that I, I told Ryan when I had him, I'm like, wow, everyone needs a horse like this. And, you know, you look at Lincoln's eye and it, if you've ever seen a Jersey cow with their big eye, that's, that's Lincoln. He, he is the kindest looking horse you ever saw. And I really enjoyed my time with him. And then from there, um, Ryan booked in Silver Assured, this big guy here. And I'll tell you what, he did not fail to impress me. He brought everything Lincoln had and more. I, I I'm, it's, Hard to say it any other way than I'm just in love with this horse. He was so easy, super quiet, super athletic. If you've been watching my videos on Sterling, you would be able to see that. And I'm gonna play some as we go here. And then his color, like, it's just so rare. The silver color, we're gonna talk a little bit more about what silver actually is, but just to have, like, the, the pizzazz this horse has. There's horses that make a trainer feel like crap, <laughs> make real hum really humble me, <laughs> which maybe is good that I get those now and then, but then there's horses that make you feel like a million bucks. And I'll tell you what, every ride on this horse makes me feel like a million bucks. He just, he looks good, feels good, and people always compliment me on it too. And, and I, I shouldn't be the one taking the credit. He, he's falling asleep on us here. <laughs> but no, he, he just brought so much to the table and it was so easy. My family has grown from 
is just me and my wife to three kids in three years. And we only have two broke riding horses. So my herd needs to expand. And where my mentality has changed or where I have evolved from buying that $500 horse to where I am now is really evident here. A horse like Sterling is exactly what my family needs. I can put, like, I'd be confident to put kids on him to, to he's just a family style of a horse. So right now, Ryan has one mare that I'm getting a full out of and she foaled a week ago out of Sterling, or by Sterling. And then I have a mare of my own that's in full, to, in full by Sterling. And I can't tell you how excited I am because of the color that I'm guaranteed, because of the great confirmation, but most of all, for that great quiet mind. And that's exactly what my family needs. I've evolved from buying good deals to understanding the true value in a purchase decision with a horse, which in the long run really is the good deals. So my name is Ryan Fleetwood. We own a business called Fleetwood Farms Quarter Horses, which is a multi-generational business in Southern Alberta. Uh, my mom got into quarter horses, my granddad raised thoroughbreds, and we are pushing 30 years as an AQHA breeder. I'm an AQHA professional horseman, and we recently won the best <laughs> We recently won the Best Remuda Award, uh, awarded by the Canadian Quarter Horse Association in, in Canada. In 2014, the year Sterling was born, I had the opportunity to acquire some of the silver uh, breeding and the, the silver family of horses, which originated on the Bayou Ranch and they came to me from Vossler's uh, up in BC who owned the sire to Silver Shirt and to Silver Lincoln, who's a half-brother. And I was told at the time about their disposition, but everybody tells me about the horse's great disposition, especially when they're trying to sell me horses. I guess what's made me a believer is being around these horses and seeing them, riding them, and seeing it again and again through the generations that they come through as what I call a user-friendly mind on these horses. They are so quiet, so easy, they retain information, they're brave, they're just 100% there all of the time. And I feel that in this world there is a whole lot of room for amateurs such as myself and perhaps you to have horses that are easy. These stallions breeding in on some of our more modern day performance bred mares are giving us flash and color and disposition and beautiful minds for most of the equine industry. So people get so hung up on expense when buying horses and they really forget that the most expensive or the cheapest part of owning a horse is buying a horse. And it really is the reality. So why not spend a little extra in the beginning and get a sterling rather than something that's just not gonna work for your family. Currently, I have a horse, his name is Flash. Um, I bought him, he was an untouched three-year-old. I paid $700 for him. And I'll tell you what, I think I got a bargain. Uh, he has a lot of good names on his papers, but Flash was um, quite sensitive. It took over a year of riding before I put my wife on him, and to this day I'm still quite careful about where I put kids, like what situations my kids ride him in. Um, I rope off that horse, he stops, spins, he's, and I love Flash, but for my family, that's just not quite what I needed. Training horses, one of the big trouble points that I have. Every, so often I'll get horses in and I'm like, okay, I don't know if this is the best horse for your family. I don't know if this is like your skill level. 
and there are people time and time again, oh no, no, just keep going with it, we'll go with it. And so I put two, three, four months on this horse for them. And the horse gets handling pretty nice and working good. But the owner isn't a good enough rider to ride the horse. Whereas a horse like Sterling, you get six months into him like I have just about now, I'd, I'd put my wife on him. I value his quiet demeanor so much and I think that most of my clients need that. I, I have seen so many horses that are too sensitive for the riders we have today. Well, it's a fairly popular and flashy look that the stallion has about him, which I think catches people's eye in the beginning, and then from there they start to realize just how special he is in disposition, of course his confirmation and his athletic ability that you talked about. But what really makes Sterling stand out from the crowd is the brain inside of his head and the disposition that he has and how very quiet he is. In today's world, we have such an educated marketplace of people who are horse people, but 90% of those people will never see or want to be on the inside of a competition pen. So what those people need is a horse with a quiet mind who will forgive your mistakes and go on and be brave, go forward when you ask them to. They don't have a lot of spook and shy in them. They retain the information that you've given them or that a professional has given them, and they're just easy and user-friendly like this stallion. And so I have five months into Sterling, uh, in training time, and in that time, I have never thrown a rope off of him. I've never, he's never seen a cow. Um, he's never seen a cow at Ryan's house either. Well, the other night we had ranch rope in practice, and I was like, well, I might as well get old, show old Sterling the ropes. <laughs> and so I hopped on him and grabbed a rope and threw it out there just to get him, like I wanted him to see the rope before I went running a cow down. And he was like, what is that? And he backed up a few steps and I coiled it back in, threw it out again. Again, what is that? But by the third time, nothing. And that's exactly what we want. And when I say he said, what is that? He was asking me, what is that? It's not like he was saying, what is that? By turning tail and running. It was, he stayed very under control, very quiet. And so then after playing around with that for three or four minutes, I went tracking up on this cow and swung my loop and dabbed it on. And he's like, okay, what's going on here? <laughs> new, new to cows, new to ropes. But he's like, do you want me to keep following it? I'll keep following it. And that's what we did. And I just, I had a breakaway loop on, so I dallied up and the loop popped off the cow. And we did that three or four times. And I was like, well, let's pull out the big guns. And so I got out my solid rope and healed a heifer off, healed a couple heifers off of them that night. And I was like, geez, I wish my good horse would hold the, <laughs> hold like this guy does. So that's a great example of his mind and his trainability. Me and Ryan are going to introduce you three principles that I truly believe will make a difference with you and your future horses. Principle number one, where your thinking has been off with your equine life, it's where you prioritize your money. The horse that you buy is the number one factor that influences your experiences within the horse world. People overlook that all the time. Every positive and negative experience you have with horses stems back to the horse that you are riding. The big domino, the number one thing that we want you to understand, is the cheapest part of owning a horse is buying it. I was doing some research the other night and the University of Maine found that the average annual cost of owning a horse was $3,876 per year. You were going to spend the same price on a $500 horse per year as you would if you were buying a $10,000 horse. The difference between success or not 
is really almost the same price. And I'll tell you what, buying a horse like Sterling or that $500 horse, that is the difference between success. Or Now and then you get lucky with that $500 horse and it works out good. But I've just kept saying to Ryan that Sterling, if you could have a wild card, that would be like my number one in every category. This would be it. <laughs> I, I just can't say that enough. I, Principle number two has to do with registration papers and why we have registration papers. And that reason is simply one thing, consistency. Consistency of traits throughout the ancestry gives us a better idea of what traits we're going to get in the horse that we're creating or the horse that we're using to create the next generation. Oftentimes people look back at a registration paper and they'll pick out one of the great stallions that everyone knows and they'll say, this is my such and such horse. Even though that horse makes up 12.5 or six and one quarter percent of the genetic makeup of the horse in question, there are X number of other horses, sometimes 11, sometimes 17 other horses who had just as much genetic influence on that horse as the one that they're talking about, but they choose the one that everybody knows to say, this is a such and such horse. When in fact, the horse is not able to be called a Peppy Sand Badger, for example, unless it is a direct son or daughter of Peppy Sand Badger. Silver Assured is a son of Chinky Silver and he is a purposefully bred horse who can go on and change things for people in so many positive ways like we've talked about already in his disposition, in his confirmation, and put it all in a showy little Silver Bay package for you. I had an experience that will really hit home with what Ryan is saying here. My uncle showed a horse um, that actually won the world in the cow horse and I think got second in the world um, in the reigning. He was obviously an exceptional horse and recently I got a horse in for training that was a grandson of this horse and to say the least this was the hardest horse I've trained in my life. <laughs> he put me through the... He, he tested me. It was Scary, I'll be honest. There was many days I thought to myself, am I going to die today? <laughs> and that's not a lie. <laughs> it was hard. Um, he was just super hypersensitive, not trusting, um, a very difficult mind to work with. <laughs> I have a question though. Would you rather ride a horse like that or your buffalo? My buffalo. <laughs> I know my buffalo is not going to kill me, <laughs> which maybe sounds a little odd. That horse was a, not a fun horse. <laughs> yeah, so Ryan was talking about how these horses, like, they'll say, oh, this is a such and such horse, and it's only got a sixteenth of whatever blood came from that horse. Well, I was riding a grandson of a world champion cow horse and reiner, and this, he was a wild thing. That partly has to do with his, his upbringing, he wasn't handled much as a foal, but a lot of that has to do with all that other blood that was in there. When we're talking about selling you semen from Sterling, we're not saying you're going to get a grandson of so-and-so. We're saying this is what Sterling is, this is what the traits have been fairly consistently throughout these silver horses. And so we're saying you're getting Sterling. We're not saying you're getting a Sterling's great-grandson. This is a horse for the masses. How many times have you heard somebody say or write, you can't ride the papers? That is one of the worst sayings that I have ever heard, and I have much to say about that. Because in fact, when people say that, they don't understand the principle of what registration papers are for. They're there to prove consistency. 
And if you have an idea of what each of those horses in the ancestry was like, then you have a better idea of what you're getting as far as consistent traits in the horse that you're talking about. So in this particular horse, we know that his ancestry were bred to be exactly what he is. Easy, usable, user-friendly, retain information. You can leave them for long periods of time and come back to them again. They're the same animal over and over again. So registration papers do in fact make a big difference. Having a horse that is well-bred doesn't necessarily mean it's one that you recognize all of the names on. It means that it's one that's purposefully bred for consistency of traits that are desirable for you. That's what Sterling is. Can I just like pause to say that was amazing? Okay, well, just me on my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good soapbox. It's a good soapbox. Principle number three, having a better bred horse does in fact make you look and feel better about your riding. Now, just like Ryan said, better bred doesn't necessarily mean big show names, but a horse is bred for you. That, that just carries so much power. Your confidence in riding is 100% tied to the horse that you ride. I talked just a minute ago about that super sensitive colt that was just really difficult for me. And I'll be honest, if I rode horses like that every single day, I probably wouldn't ride. <laughs> and that would be because my confidence, like, I'll tell you what, I, there was a lot of just, so like, I was just like, okay, hey, breathe, just clear my mind. And you shouldn't have to battle like that every day when you ride a horse. And that's what the quiet disposition will bring for you. It seems like every other day I have a stud come up on my newsfeed and these studs that come up on my newsfeed on social media, they're sons of a big name, sons of so-and-so, or they're even sometimes I see these big like studs that have changed the show world or the rodeo arena, but none of them are offering and promoting what we are promoting with Sterling here. I think that there are many stallions and breeders in the breeding business who promote themselves on their earnings, on what they've done in a show pen. And while that's not all bad, that's not the way to make all breeding decisions. Breeding decisions have to be made given consideration of each of the parents and the consistent ancestry that each of those parents have. You have to look at your horse and the stallion that you're considering objectively and without emotion to consider what you're going to get in the long run. It isn't all about just what they won in the show pen. The first idea that came to me was, my family needs horses like this. But then I thought, well, if I need horses like this, so does the family that doesn't train horses. <laughs> so does, like, this is just, I can't say it enough. We've said it over and over, but this is what everyone needs. He's so well-mannered. There isn't a single ride that I don't have someone say, oh, what, he's a stallion? Like, I can tell because he's built like one, but he's so quiet. And then I have people say, wow, I love him. Wow, his color, he's so gorgeous. And since I've, in the five months that I've had him in for training, I can tell you there's been a lot of people that say, well, if he accidentally gets in with my mare, I, I won't mind. <laughs> How many times I've heard that. <laughs> I need that horse in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Every single time. If he's tied up there, the owner of said horse comes to watch me ride their horse, and then they come to look at Sterling. <laughs> it's, it's quite funny. Here we're going to show you some demos, and I'm going to just 
enlighten you a little bit, show you the journey I've had with Sterling, starting with day one to here where we are now. Is it okay if we help you to evolve your horse life? Is it okay if we help you to create your forever horse that you will make so many great memories on? It's simple. <laughs> it enables you in your riding. When riding Sterling, I don't have to think about if he'll be fine with this or if he'll be fine with that. I just do it. Going in the mountains, going in the hills, crossing creeks, you know, you still have to ride the horse. You still have to train the horse. But it's not a battle of whether it's possible. It's a matter of let's just go and do it. <laughs> and I think that's what everyone's looking for in their riding, no matter what they're doing. It doesn't matter what your discipline is or whether you have a discipline or not, what you're looking for is a horse that you can't go do it with. If you are interested in frozen salmon anywhere in North America on Silver Assured, you can follow through to the application page and put in the application for your mare to come through to us for approval. As a multi-generational AQHA breeder, I believe it is imperative that we breed to better the breed itself. So having said that, I would appreciate five panel testing on any mares that you'd like to breed to Sterling and also some information, photographs, and pedigree. Silver Assured is open to any breed of mare that is interested in breeding to him. He does guarantee the silver, he guarantees the black, because he's homozygous for both of those color genetics. He's also homozygous for a goody. So there will be no fully black bodied horses by him with the silver. If your mare carries cream dilution, done factor, roan, etc., then there's a chance that she can bring that color into your foal as well. But it will be silver. The horse you ride tomorrow starts today. I think oftentimes people aren't thinking about their future with horses enough. Um, when, as we've said before, the horse you have makes all the difference. I want my kids to grow up, to ride horses, to, to carry on my family legacy, 
if my kids have bad experiences when they're young, that's going to stick in their minds forever. They're not going to ride horses when they're growing up. But if they spend their whole youth just having fun and riding around and going to ranch roping and, you know, just having fun, that, that sums it up back there. That is going to be how I can make my family legacy one generation further. Ryan, you have kids. You'd say the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. I think that it's important for the children in my family, as it is for you and for others, to have positive experiences with their horses so that they continue with that throughout their lifetime. When your application for frozen semen on Silver Assured gets approved, you will receive one dose of frozen to your local equine reproductive vet and there will be one further dose available to you should you not get a pregnancy with your mare. Before this, Sterling has only ever been open for live cover, which greatly limits the amount of mares that he's been bred to. But now, it is open for you. All over North America. If you're in Florida, California, Texas, if you're in the Northwest Territories, this is for you. He is available. The AQHA is the largest breed registry in the world. Currently numbering for horses is over 6 million. So there are a few million AQHA horses alive currently in the world. This stallion is the only one in the world, in the AQHA, who carries two copies of silver who will guarantee you a silver full. Like that is the guarantee. You see this color? I'll just like lead him up here. Like this mane. I know people say color doesn't matter, but we all know that's wrong. <laughs> like people say color doesn't sell, but I'll bet you you've noticed that I'll bet you've noticed that every buckskin, every palomino on the market, they sell like hotcakes compared to your solid sorrels. Well, this color is rare. <laughs> the AQHA now recognizes silver. I've seen, I, I read an article they posted on it. And it, even in that article, they describe it as a rare color. And it really is. This stud, he is a bay horse. And so he would be red with black points, but the silver gene dilutes those points. So this mane would have been black, but the silver gene, but the silver gene causes this ombre type look. And that comes in the tail as well. Well, you've made it this far, which shows that Sterling has obviously struck a chord. And because you're still watching, it shows that this is probably something for you. So click on the button below and we'll see if we can approve your mare and get you a guaranteed silver colt. I have two coming and I can't be more excited. Now there is a limited supply. And so the sooner you get your application in, the better. We're gonna be showing them some more demo videos after this. Feel free to watch as long as you want. And when you're ready, click on the button below and start your silver journey today. Thank you for watching.
You've got a front end like a trucker. Just. <laughs> what is going on? Get out of here, pigeons. Oh. Oh, we were so close. Darn it. Do you want me to do that? Yep. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> the time to think about buying a horse is not when your horse dies. <laughs> it's... The... <laughs> not when you have a dead horse on your hands. <laughs> My horse is dead, I need a new horse. Oh, <laughs> Blooper reel. Blooper reel. Well, you've made it this far, which shows that Sterling has obviously struck a chord. And because you're still watching, it shows that this is probably something for you. So click on the button below, and we'll see if we can approve your mare and get you a guaranteed silver colt. I have two coming, and I can't be more excited. Now, there is a limited supply, and so the sooner you get your application in, the better. And when you're ready, click on the button below and start your silver journey today. Thank you for watching.